Why, why, why didn't I buy stock in Zoom? Why have I had to make 20, 20 different phone calls? Why can't I do yoga before coffee? Will I ever get my hair cut? My hair. Will I ever get my hair cut again? When did culture become politics? What is a comprehensive workflow spreadsheet? Why? Why is my ankle still not better? Why? Why? What is it about this particular moment? this time go through fear through fear to despair to hope teaching has tested my f simple line get down teaching has tested my fortitude and it Mahler it tests my resilience. Teaching especially banned. Some get off the piano. Some thoughts. Some thoughts. And then there are my cats. Cymbeline and Mahler, they love to jump. Yes, I mean you. To jump up on the piano. And when I sing a hymn, Cymbeline likes to sing along. But Mahler covers his ears and hides. Yes, you do. Ow! Don't bite my ankles! Before life went rushing by, but now it's a different kind of exhaustion. Mother is curled up in the case of Why, why, why didn't I, why didn't I buy stock, stock, stock in Amazon? Why, what, what is it about my ankle? When did politics become yoga? 
How can I do spreadsheets before coffee? Why do 20 different phone calls give me tongue tension? Why? Why didn't I? Why didn't I buy stock, stock in my petty obsessions? With so many people in so much pain, why, why can't I lift my mind? It's an honor to uh, present the next three composers for our unaccompanied song project tonight. I have Marjorie Merriman with me and Sean Oak Pevelo and David Hoos, who's probably a surprise to some of you. Not unknown, but a surprise as a composer. Um, we lost one of our composers um, in our project who was unable to uh, follow through with the project. So knowing that David started out as a composer, and I knew he had worked on a piece actually this summer. So I asked him if he would consider being a part of this project. And with a little arm twisting and a lot of thought on his part, he finally agreed and I'm overjoyed uh, at it, uh, about it. And um, I know you will be too when you hear the songs. But first I'd like to start um, with uh, Sean and Marjorie and ask about uh, the text for your songs because originally this project the, the idea was for all the composers to use texts written by the singers so I'm going to ask each of you what your process was with that and um, because I think they were slightly different uh, Sean would you like to start 
Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Um, each composer, uh, each sorry, each performer, uh, uh, they were different. So Jen, um, she sent me just a lot of her social media posts from the past year, and it was gold. So much to choose from. <laughs> uh, and so um, I just took one line from one of her social media posts, and that became a text. It was it was it was quite lovely. Brian, um, he. Uh, so th that was a little different because um, we actually uh, met over Zoom just so I can get, get to know him. And so we, we talked about what it was like during this, uh, um, you know, pandemic life. And, um, and I wrote down a lot of different things he was feeling. Um, and so I kind of developed a text from, uh, from, this in from the interview I did with him. I'm not a poet. Uh, at all, uh, but but it was so inspiring. I was able to uh, just to grab some words, um, and you'll you'll hear um, um, some uh, in, in in that in that piece. And then the final piece, uh, we met, and her story was so inspiring. Um, it, it, that was more deep in the sense that we went. It was almost a response to her life journey. Um, some beautiful things, there's also some tragic things that happened in her life. Um, and then we saw the beauty um, in this pandemic experience. Um, she was able to bring out, out that. And so I used a verse from a prayer from uh, the Old Testament, uh, the book of Numbers um, as a text. So they're all different. One was the original text by Jen, you know, one was, uh, a, a, you know, a text that I wrote and another one came from from Holy Scripture. Wonderful, wonderful. And Marjorie, now your your process was e different. It was different because originally, I think the plan was that these um, singers would, there would be a, a, some sort of interview. I think you and David were actually going to be part of that and uh, with me and also with my daughter, Sarah Cohen, who is a poet. Instead, we devised a, a different method, which is that each of the singers was just asked to send whatever was on their mind, just send their thoughts, just write something down, not a text, but just whatever was on their mind. And actually I was kind of nervous about writing a piece about the pandemic. I, so I was hoping that they might write about nature or something like that. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> but in the end, they all wrote about the pandemic <laughs> because that was obviously what's on everybody's mind. Yes, and, still. <laughs> and my daughter, uh, had a very interesting time. She was very enthusiastic about, about it in the end because instead of shaping those concerns into a text that, that she, where she came up with the words, instead she used almost a, a kind of a collage technique to take mm. phrases from their texts and order those into, into a text that could be set. So uh, that was, that was very interesting. They some of them had to be changed a little bit more because people say things that are kind of unsettable in music. <laughs> they have combinations of syllables that are very sometimes very difficult. But um, but in the end, I think all the texts came out uh, very interestingly. They're all quite different. Mm -hmm. um, one of them is a whole set of complaints. There were so many complaints that we had to make those into two songs. Uh, one of the texts is a duet, and it was it was very interesting because this was Tom and Llewellyn Best sent separate texts that uh, then had to be somehow combined into a duet, and they were about the same things but not completely the same. And one of them, <clears throat> one of the texts, really sort of affected the other one in an interesting way. So it was it was a very interesting, sort of fascinating process, and at the same time, it was. A little scary for the composer because it's uncontrollable. You don't know what what they're going to do, and and it felt like it should what they did should be honored. You know, we shouldn't make up something else okay. if if whatever it was was um, not what I might have had in mind. So another one of the texts um, was in two parts. The first part was was rather. Um, contemplative about the difficulties of the pandemic and the other one was about the singer's cats. And <laughs> um, so, she, so she said, you know, I, I'm very concerned with all these 
serious thoughts. And then, and then there are also my cats and those are kind of a lighter side of things. So my daughter decided to intersperse the cats <laughs> in, <laughs> into the more serious text. And so there were, there were a lot of um, decisions that got made that, that shaped these texts, I think, in, in interesting ways. And David, what about your process with the texts? You considered using texts, but went a different direction. In certain ways, I was, I had an easier job than Sean and Marjorie because when at the last minute I decided I actually would write these songs, um, it, time was a little short and the back and forth with the singers was probably not going to bear fruit. So I started looking for texts that would be appropriate. And I look back to the time of the 1918 pandemic for writings. And surprisingly enough, there were not very many. There were some, but since um, World War I had just come to the end, I think that, that was so many people's focus yeah. um, that uh, the attention to the pandemic, even though it, it hit the world as broadly and deeply as this pandemic has struck us, um, there were not that many writings. And then I came on a poem by a Japanese poet whose name is Yosano Akiko, um, Japanese poet who was one of the most important poets of the 20th century in Japan. Now, I say she was one of the most important poets. The fact is that I didn't know anything about her. I'm ashamed to say she had lived from 1878 to 1942. And she was extraordinarily prolific, who is reported to have written between 20,000 and 50,000 poems. Many of them are short, haiku-like. And in fact, the poem that I set is kind of for haiku. Um, <clears throat> when, when this poem um, from an old nest, as it turns out, was actually written before the pandemic in Japan, three years before, 1915. Um, and it's a kind of romantic, sensual, visionary poem that turns out to be prescient in some way, mm -hmm. kind of an ode to the difficulty, the challenges of sequestering about whatever joy might be found at home and about love's ability to survive difficult times. So I was drawn to its images, its rhythms, and this haiku-like structure that lent itself to the purposes of this song project. It's four verses, and each one has four lines in it. Each verse has four lines in it, and I decided that I could set it as one song with each verse assigned to a different singer. So. That's, uh, that's what I did, and, and because the text was, was preordained, as it were, um, <laughs> it, I think my challenges might have been uh, less than Sean's and Marjorie's might have been. But I think you did a very clever thing in that you, um, with the four verses, there, there is, the listeners will hear when you hear the songs, there is an overlap of a thread of text so that they, as a way to keep it as a whole, I suppose, right, David? Yes. Yeah. There are a lot of cross references, direct ones and indirect ones, and they're they um, they are essentially one song, even though the first three verses are sung by women in that mm -hmm. octave, as it were, and right. the last one is sung by a man, therefore in that octave. Mm -hmm. So I don't know that it could ever be sung by one person, but. Um, there are these overlaps that tie them all together.
could not bear it. Earthbound as I am, I could not bear it. What flowers free I could not bear it. Don't sing to me. All things, all turn yourselves away from me. small voice repeating the whisper that never changes. I rest in the nest of first love.
isolated, 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 isolated. Zoom, 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 isolated, zoom, zoom. Zoom. Distantly so shallowly distant, isolated. Isolated and ninety five. I saw. The fog on my glasses is almost clear. Be great.